Let's take a look at uh, more gradient mesh work. Uh, here I actually have the same image that's open in two windows. I select your main image and go window, new window to open the second window and I position the second window here. This is the window that I'm going to actually be creating my mesh in. This is the uh, another window of the same file. As you can see when I select this file and turn off the bottom layer, I've already traced part of this picture. So I'm going to uh, begin on another layer here. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to start out with the rectangle because that is something that uh, I've learned from Ann Patrick and other um, illustrator artists who are very good at what they do. I'm going to um, elect to take this object and turn it into a gradient mesh. And I'm going to start with a simple 2x2 two two mesh. And I will uh, then press R on the keyboard to get my rotate tool. And I will rotate this mesh. And I will move this object over what I'm going to trace. Now over here in the um, second view, you can see that that's in preview mode. I want the view in this one to actually be in outline mode so that I can actually see what's going on here. So that's Command Y or View Outline. If it doesn't change for you, go ahead and turn your layer off and back on. Seems to be a little bug or something, but at any rate, now I can see my outline. I'm going to use my um, direct selection tool to make this mesh fit the object that I'm going to trace. So using the direct selection tool, I can fit this uh, to fit the contour of what it is I'm going to trace. And that is this section of finger here. So I'm going to uh, use these control control arms here to shape things as well as dragging the points around. Actually I want this to be out here. It's late folks. I'm doing this late at night. And I am using the control handles to bend the path the way that I want it to go. Placing these points where I want them and shaping them up to fit the contour of what it is I want to trace. And contour is very important. And also starting out with the primitive is important because the primitive is actually um, going to allow me to get regu more regular mesh lines when I start adding uh, to my mesh. And so I can, I can, you know, the finger kind of curves out around this way. So I want this to curve out around this way. Uh, just imagine you're wrapping a string around your object, what shape it would form if you were actually wrapping a string around the object that you're tracing. And this would bend down like that. You also uh, want to take care to, um, to put points in spots where you know um, you're going to want changes in color. So, so when I start adding mesh adding mesh lines, which I'm about to here in a second. And by the way, notice over here in the, in the preview, you see what I have at this point is a white mesh. I'm going to get the mesh tool. That's U on the keyboard if you want to press that. Uh, I got it from the toolbox there. And I can click here and I can add columns and rows. Now it's important to actually place these where you uh, see that you're going to need transitions in color. It turns dark right through there because of the shadow, so I'm going to put one there. You can always add more of these later, so don't worry about it if, uh, if you feel like you haven't added enough. You can add too many, so start out with fewer, add more if you need to. I gives me the eyedropper tool. Command click to pick up your um, direct selection tool, and this is how I'm putting color in. I'm actually uh, selecting each one of these these nodes and I'm picking up color next to where the node is. If you take a look over in the preview the color is filling in as I am doing this. So this is a way that you can work on your mesh and see the results over in the next window. And of course I'm just clicking away here. I'm not looking at the next window at this point in time. Just clicking, or clicking away here filling these in. If I miss some I can look in the other window and see where I've missed and I can go back and get them. This, this goes fairly quickly, especially once you're used to it. 
then you can go back and adjust any of these after the fact. So, so uh, what you pick up right now with your color may not be what you want in the end, but you're getting the job done and you're getting some color in there so that you can go back and adjust it later if you find that you need to. And there, I have quickly done that. Now if I come back over here to this image and turn off the background, I can see how much of this I have actually traced. And it doesn't look too far off from the photograph, so that is how you do it.